Hi, my name is Ahmed Sharif. I'm a senior technical marketing engineer in the SASE business unit. This is the second video of the pair packet, pair flow technology comparison that we started last week. But before I start with this video, I would like to remind you with what we learned in the previous video. We know that there are two technologies that the SD1 devices can use to utilize all of the transport circuits between the source and the destination to optimize the application performance. And those are pair flow and pair packet technology. We also learned that the pair packet has multiple technical advantages over the pair flow technology. For example, in the pair packet technology, we'll be able to utilize all of the transport circuits and join them in one bundle, virtual bundle, and show it to the application layer as a virtual bundle where the bandwidth equals to the sum of the, all of the transports. While the pair flow can utilize all of the transport circuits only by using multiple flows and will never be able to show the application layer that virtual bundle with the sum of the, all of the transports. And of course, in the pair flow technology, one flow can't utilize all of the transport circuits, but in the pair packet, one flow can really utilize all of the, all of the transport circuits. Second, in the pair packet, the SD1 devices react quickly to the brownout condition and move all of this, all of the current flows from the brownout condition circuit to the other circuit. While in the pair flow, the current flows are stuck in the same circuit until the end of the flow. But to understand the value of these advantages, we need to associate them with business outcomes and talk about some examples. And this is what I'm going to do in this video. So let's get started. So I have two examples to explain these advantages. The first one is an upload or download of the heavy data between a source and destination. And I'm going to start with pair packet first. So I have two SD1 devices, a branch and a data center, and two circuits between them with the same speed. So the first thing the SD1 devices will do is to form what they call SD1 overlay between them in order to utilize all of the transport circuits. And we're going to assume a user and a web server where the user is going to send a lot of data from the branch side to the data center side. Let's assume this user would like to send 10 gigabyte worth of data. In a pair packet technology, the SD1 device on the branch side will take five gig, send it in the circuit number one, and take another five gig and send it in circuit number two. When another user comes in, for example, with 14 gigabyte, the SD1 device will do the same exact thing, 7 gig circuit 1 and 7 gig circuit 2. So what we notice here, the SD1 devices were capable to achieve what we call bandwidth aggregation. And bandwidth aggregation means user number one who is sending 10 gigabyte will experience the application performance of sending this data over a circuit of 2 gigabit per second bundled together. Second, this is always gives us 100% accurate load sharing. As you can see, always sending the same amount of data on all transports, while we assume here the same speed of both circuits. You can assume different speed and you still get the same accurate load sharing. Finally, this is independent of the number of flows. It doesn't matter how many flows you get. Even if it is one flow, we always can utilize all of the transport circuits. And this is always 100% accurate load sharing. This gives us a predictable and consistent behavior of the load sharing load utilization of all of the transport circuits. Now let's see how the pair flow does the same thing. So when the first user comes in to the SD1 device and send 10 gigabyte worth of data, the SD1 device in the pair flow technology will use one of the circuits only to send the whole entire 10 gigabyte. And then when the second user comes in with 14 gigabyte this time, the SD1 device will take the whole entire 14 gigabyte and send it over the circuit number two. So what you can see here is an equal load chain, and this will never give us bandwidth aggregation. So the application layer of the user number one who's sending 10 gigabyte will always experience the performance of the one circuit only. This, as I said, will never give us 100% accurate load chaining because we didn't know how big is the data in each, in each flow. Finally, this will always depend on the number of flows. We always need a lot of flows to get some kind of 
equal load sharing load balancing. And this will always give us unpredictable load sharing result, no matter what, because we didn't know how much data in each flow. This explains the benefit of having a pair packet over pair flow when we use a TCP IP application to, trans to transfer data between a source and the destination. Let's go and see another example where we can talk about the UDB traffic, a real-time application. Let's do the same exact thing. So here I have a phone and a video conferencing devices, and the phone have a lot of, uh, or have one of the voice over IP uh, traffic that needs to go from the branch to the data center over the SD1 device. So in this case, the traffic will go to the SD1 device and the SD1 device, because this real time traffic does not need load sharing over all of the transport circuits. It does not need the load sharing mechanism that sends packets from circuit on circuit number one and back in circuit number two. So this type of application works better over one circuit and you can decide which application to use this technology versus that technology. So the voice over IP will take one circuit and as soon as this circuit start to have more jitter, extra delay, which makes the circuit brown out, immediately the voice over IP traffic will go and take the second circuit. When we do the same exact thing in the pair flow, this is what's going to happen. First, the voice over IP traffic will go in circuit number one. And once we introduce delay, jitter, or packet loss, nothing going to happen to the current flow. Because the decision to take circuit, num circuit number one for the voice over IP traffic has been already made in the beginning of the flow. However, the subsequent flows will take the next circuit that is not a brown out condition. And this is one of the benefits of the pair flow. But as you can see, pair packet always gives us predictable behavior, fast reaction to the brown out condition. And this is what we always say, pair packet is much better than pair flow for the SD1. Uh, application performance. Thank you very much.